All right, so abortion, a very delicate topic for many people. And I would ask that if you cannot control your emotions or have an open mind, then turn off this video until you can. I do not intend to inflict pain or sorrow on anyone but rather bring hope and joy and understanding to those who hold a similar position as I and those who may not understand it. I'm going to read the thoughts that I've written so far and invite you to open your heart and open your mind to understand what I'm trying to say. Um, to start off, I'm probably going to do a no sex before marriage video later and and why that is why are some of the reasons that God would say don't have sex before marriage um, but obviously this is this is one of those factors um, to avoid the temptation of, of having an abortion in the first place and that's part of the no sex argument um, but that's for later a little background on my familiarity with with young life and with abortion. Um, I have a very close family member who has who was pregnant, um, unwed, and decided to carry the baby full term and give it up for adoption. It was a lovely experience. It was a very rewarding experience. I've had very close family members who were just the opposite, that they were not able to bear children and were able to adopt adopted a child and that was also a very rewarding and beautiful experience. I have a very close family member who um, I remember growing up that on one of the days every year she would get very drunk and cry the whole day and I didn't know why and um, I found out later that that was the anniversary of when she had an abortion and obviously felt very painful about it. Just today I, I spoke with a friend uh, about this topic and she had an abortion and felt very proud and um, respected her previous decision to have an abortion because she didn't want to have anything to do with um, said baby's father and so that was one of the things along with another discussion of another friend of mine um, the last couple of days on the topic that prompted me to make this video um, here we go. So, I have a friend who who claims that a fetus is not a human life. He says it's just a clump of cells and it doesn't have a nervous system, it doesn't have a brain, so it can't remember anything, and so you're not really taking human life. It's just a clump of cells. And, and that's really my whole objection is I I object to the taking of life, especially a life that has no defense or, or say in what is happening. Um, so what does constitute life? Um, let's say there was a 40-year-old person that could not feel pain or had severe nervous damage, nerve damage. Um, so that I'm comparing this to the to the embryo. My friend says that you know it can't if it can't feel pain and doesn't have a brain, then it's not human life, um, or it can't remember, then it's not human life. Um, so let's say this 40 year old person you know was in a car accident or whatever and had some sort of you know severe central nervous system damage where all their nerves couldn't feel pain for the time being or their memory wasn't working, but you knew, we'll say nine months, that this person would be healed and that they would be able to feel again and be able to have memories. Um, would you feel the same way about taking that 40-year-old person's life as you would um, the embryo? And perhaps that's not the best argument. Perhaps there are, you know, that 40-year-old person may have children or um, other people that remember them that uh, give a different weight to it. Um, but you could say the same thing about the embryo. Um, you know, there's going to be people with 
other emotions attached to that embryo than, than just the mother or the father, and, um, but especially those two. Um, but anyways, how would you feel? What, what, would you, what would you feel the difference between those two is? Comment below. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard the endangered tortoise argument where an endangered tortoise egg has more rights than a, a human fetus. Um, once a, 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 one of these endangered tortoises' eggs are fertilized and laid, um, it is a felony and punishable by jail time if you prevent that egg from potential growth. Um, to destroy one of those eggs. I know, I know. But Mormon fan, we're not endangered species, are we? And that's not my question, that's not my argument. My, my question is, if we're discussing when life begins, just like a fertilized human egg, the fertilized tortoise egg, left unharmed, has potential to grow older, and I say grow older because it is a different life form, um, it's just a different age of life. And so if left unperturbed, that egg has potential to grow fully into um, its older self as a full-grown tortoise. And just as the fetus, left unperturbed, left, left unharmed, it'll grow into a human. Uh, <laughs> already is a human and grow into a full-sized human. Um, so that's again the question, uh, where does life begin? And I view it kind of like, maybe this isn't the best analogy either, but I view it kind of like an epoxy. Maybe I'll show what I'm talking about here. But those two-tubed um, epoxies that when you squirt them together into one, one paste, those independent uh, chambers, when they become connected, a, a different something else happens. Something new happens where that glue begins to become real and becomes to, begins to work. And actually, um, independently, those two substances were nothing really, but together it takes on a whole new form and a whole new purpose. Um, so, back to my friend. He tells me that when you use a contraceptive, it's the same thing as abortion because um, he, he had told me that he was an accident and that it should he have, some people ask him that, you know, what if your parents aborted you? And he says, well, if they would have used contraceptive or used a condom, then it would have been the same thing. And I don't, I don't agree with that. I firmly disagree with that, actually. Um, Conception is entirely different than using a condom, um, entirely different than most forms of birth control, or pulling out, or whatever you have. Once the egg becomes fertilized, it takes on new life. It's something completely different. Um, sperm that's not ejaculated in the male body lives from two to three months. Um, once it's in the female body, it can survive up to three to five days. Um, a female egg once it is released, um, only lives somewhere between you know one and two days is what most estimates are, um, and so I mean you've got two days maximum for a female egg once released. You've got five days maximum inside the female body once the sperm is released, and should they not meet, five days, right? I mean, and even in the maximum of a couple couple months in the male body, but if they don't ever meet, then that's the longest is you know uh, a few months maximum of a sperm inside the male body not released. And so there must be something different here. Um, if we're not doing any kind of external influence on this fertilized egg, it has potential to to grow multiples of thousands of times and live thousands of times longer than either one of these two sperm and egg independently. So that says something pretty significant. Um, I'm going to go back a little bit. We talked a little bit about sex and I'm just going to say that, that is one of the one of the reasons um, why this is such a important topic to discuss premarital sex and 
sure people are always going to have premarital sex, but now you can see a little more why God is so adamant um, that we do not engage in premarital sex. Um, assuming that any married couple um, loves each other very much, um, even if they were using some form of contraceptive and that contraceptive failed, that uh, fertilized egg, that human life, would still be able to grow up into uh, a loving family that cares for them. Um, you wouldn't have this thought of, oh, I don't want to be tied to this person for the rest of my life, um, which is uh, a typical, is a common reason why abortions do happen. It's because um, it was said an accident where having sex wasn't an accident, but the getting pregnant part was. And, and I don't think that that's a good enough excuse. I think that any time that we are to have sex, we should know that that is one of the very real possible consequences um, of our actions, is to create life. And now that we've taken that choice on ourself, we have already made the decision, and it should not be um, so easy even a decision just to, to take that back. Moving on. Uh, so, what does that mean to people? And that's, again, that's all I'm trying to say is, is that life really does begin at conception. It, it takes on a f completely new form of life. Um, left unperturbed, grow into a human being, a full size grown adult. As you let this human being grow, it'll continue to. So. Does this, what does this mean? People have already made the decision. Um, do we call them murderers? No, absolutely not. That's not helpful and that's not right. Um, it's a very weighty decision that people have really thought and contemplated over and they didn't take light, lightly um, in a majority of cases. Um, are there indifferent timetables involved where the decision becomes a lot more weighty, um, perhaps, and most likely so. Um, is there a difference between a, a morning after pill and a, you know, eight months and 29 days abortion? Yeah, I can't see how you don't think there's anything different. But regardless, oh, you must admit and see, and again, I'm not condoning morning after pill, because, like I've said, that life begins at conception. But you must see that that life does take on a new form and that it does begin at conception. So don't try to argue that. It, it doesn't make sense. Most liberally minded people love to use science to back up a lot of their information and to see that, to try to say that life doesn't begin at conception is, that seems very backward and silly. Um, are there other gray lines that um, abortion might be appropriate or considered? Um, there are other gray lines, rape and incest, or the life of the mother being in danger. These are these are different gray lines that we can discuss. But again, life has already begun, and we need to recognize that when we are making these arguments. Um, and that's really the, the main point I wanted to address in this video, is that's my opinion, that's my view, that's my perspective. Um, I, res I respectfully ask that if you cannot engage in an intelligent discussion without resorting to name-calling or very strong negative emotion, that you refrain from, from comment and maybe, you know, think and pray and humble yourself a little more before coming back to comment that you may um, be able to do so in a, in a way that your heart is, is softened and, and you can feel loved and know that God loves you. Um, I would ask that any of you who are struggling to make this decision and are, are wondering if you should abort, 
um, that you do consider the life of the baby. It is a living organism and it's inside of you and or inside your your partner and we should not um, take that lightly. Um, there's so many people that are, are looking for babies and I'm sure you've heard horror stories about children growing up um, without two loving parents and perhaps that is too late of a, a decision to make to to only have sex with that um, partner that you love um, but there's so many other great and wonderful stories of life and great people that have that have come from parents that um, could not or would not take care of them and so let's not make that decision for them let let them make the decision of who they want to be if you've already made the decision and, and you still feel it was the right decision, then that's fine. Um, we can leave it at that. Um, if you like, don't think that I'm going to judge you, I don't think anything different of my friend who, who was in a similar situation that had uh, an abortion and she's okay with it. I, um, I'm very grateful that she shared her experience with me and that I was giving me a, a deeper understanding and a, and a a deeper respect for the the weight of this decision that many of the world's um, people have to make. Um, I still don't agree with it, but it doesn't mean that I I judge you or or think negatively about you. If you have made the decision already um, to abort and you feel horrible that that you aborted this life. Um, I just want to reach out to you and, and let you know that God loves you. You're a child of God, either a son or daughter, depending on how you made that decision. But God loves you regardless of your decisions and your choices and your actions. And no matter what it may be, He loves you and, and wants to uh, bring you back to Him. He wants you to have happiness. There's a video that I made on what is the purpose of life. What is the purpose of this these, these lives that we're bringing into the world and, and I'll put the link here um, but watch that um, again so if you've made this decision and you feel pain uh, I would sincerely ask that you pray to God and ask him for to take that pain away Jesus Christ has already suffered for you he's already bled and died and you can have that pain lifted and lessened it may go away completely it may not um, but he's already suffered that for you. It may be necessary to, to speak with a bishop. Um, bishops aren't formally trained um, by educators on this, but they are formally trained on spiritual matters and how to make yourself right with God. Um, baptism, if you are not a member, is, is one of the ways that we can free ourselves of that that pain and that guilt because it washes away all of our our previous sins and transgressions and uh, transgression is is simply when we sinned but we didn't know that it was a sin so to speak and so we transgressed that law but anyways God will forgive you and he can forgive you um, should you be repentant and, and ask him to um, I will never experience that. Um, we actually, when we had our most recent baby, they more or less wanted us to get all sorts of, they, they thought that our baby was going to be Down syndrome and, and they wanted us to get these tests done quickly so that we could abort. And we opted not to have these tests done um, in a more invasive way um, due to the potential that it would increase the risk that um, the baby's life was in jeopardy. and Because we knew that regardless of whether the baby was Down syndrome, that we would keep the baby. Um, sure, it would be a hardship, but it would also be such a blessing and, and such a great joy. And everyone that I've spoken with that um, has kept their um, child that has disabilities has, has said how much joy and love and peace that they've received from um, raising such a child. There are different challenges that come along with it, but that doesn't negate our opportunity to raise this life and to help it to, to be a blessing to others.
Um, I just want you to experience the, the love and joy that, that God has for you. And um, the only way that you can do that is by placing your burdens and your questions and your sorrows on him and to, to pray to God and to allow his son Jesus Christ to take those upon you. Mormon fans signing off. Just remember, you won't love it unless you live it.